Before we take a sip of coffee, the coffee that's in our cup has taken a very long journey to get there. Before the barista brews it for you, before it's ground, before it's bagged up and sent off to the barista, the roaster's roasting it. Before the roaster roasts it, it's in this dried green, beautiful form that comes in bags from origin. And when I think about specialty coffee, I think about that quality. I think about coffee from its inception to its completion, excellence at the farm level, uh, straight on through the cultivation, the processing, uh, and then the preparation. It's great to live in Portland because there are so many options. Wide distribution through the city has helped um, create a sort of enthusiasm and a knowledge of coffee that permeates more of the general population than you get in other cities. When we talk about specialty coffee and why it's better and why it's worthwhile, uh, it is not subjectively better, it's objectively better. Specialty coffee is a coffee grower who has decided to separate some small part of his farm and devote it to a special varietal. Or take only the ripest cherries from a given harvest and process them and keep them separate and sell them for a higher price. Right now, it, it should be priced more if you think about coffee like you do other specialty items like a bottle of wine. You can buy a bottle of wine for $3, but you could also buy a bottle of wine for like $400. But we can't sell a bag of coffee for $400. You want to make sure that you're paying the farmers a fair wage, you're paying the pickers a fair wage, you're paying your baristas a fair wage and your roasters a fair wage and that everybody is winning. And you're seeing with the specialty coffee industry, you're tasting much more where the coffee is from now as opposed to just something that tastes like coffee coffee. As a roaster, you get in new green coffees constantly. Could be every month, could be every three months, could be every six months, but you're constantly getting different coffees from different parts of the world. Farmers will send us coffee, send us green samples. Farmers we've never heard of, they've heard of Ristretto, and they like what we do, they like our brand, they like our emphasis on quality. Um, Din Johnson, the owner, will sample roast the coffee. Um, I'll set up a cupping and we'll cup it to see if it's something we really, really like. And if it is, then Din will begin to build the relationship with that farm. Most roasters will write a profile for every new coffee they get in and decide what they want to do with it after they throw it on the cupping table or try it as espresso or however your method might be. Our main objective is to be able to replicate what we've done, be able to produce the same bean the same way every single time. Consistency in coffee is the hallmark of excellence. You can't one day be on point and have the most you know, magnificent coffee experience ever. Uh, we joke about you can't go to a restaurant one day and have a filet mignon and then have chopped steak the next day. And you're like, wait a minute, I just had filet mignon, what, what is this? So it would be far better to just serve a straight up sirloin every single day and people know what to expect, they know what that is. Uh, and that's why uh, you start looking at the success of a lot of places like Starbucks, they, at least people know what they're gonna get. Uh, and hopefully with the specialty industry where we find ourselves now is they know what they're going to get, but it's going to be infinitely better than what they can get there. You want to roast it as best as possible so it's roasted evenly. It's a dense bean, so the moisture is in the middle of that bean. You want to roast it as evenly as possible. You're kind of just trying to get a delicate balance of sweetness without over-roasting or under-roasting. If you over roast something, it's going to be oily and you're going to taste the roast and less of the bean. The way we roast coffee, we like to roast coffee to the point where the sugars begin to develop so it begins to balance out the sour acidic notes that you get in a lighter roast coffee, but we don't roast it any further to the point where the coffee starts to break down and it becomes burnt. If you under roast, you might just be tasting like oats and grassiness, which is you're actually tasting the green side of the bean. Coffee used to taste just like coffee. Everyone was roasting super dark, and it was, a, and it was a, kind of a one-trick pony. And what we're seeing now is 
all of the nuance, all of the subtlety, roasting a little bit lighter so that we can capture the terroir of the coffee and see what all these different varietals from different areas taste like. And it's exciting to see that that, that evolution is, is, is got miles to go before we even approach where, where wine or even beer or distilled spirits are. We're starting to see, you know, brew methods change. We're starting to see extraction levels change. We're doing all kinds of stuff that weren't even be done, being done, you know, eight, nine months ago. So it's fast and furious. Um, I think when we started, I think we saw the rise of five micro roasters in that year in Portland, something like that. It was ridiculous. And to see that happen, to see it going from, you know, one major roaster in town to then everybody roasting. Uh, and that's, that's neat to be part of. So that's, that's what I love doing, so. Portland's a pretty excellent place for coffee, mainly because we have a huge variety of roasters here. We have a full spectrum of roasting styles here in Portland. The coffee that we're drinking these days is no argument. It's roasted better, it's prepared better, it's extracted better. It is objectively more delicious than it ever has been. The more we educate the public, the more we educate ourselves, the more we educate the people who are all along the supply chain of coffee, all the way down to the people who are planting the trees, harvesting, tending the trees, tending the berries. It elevates it and improves it. And if we don't do that, it never gets better for anybody involved. I think you go because there is attention to detail, attention to design, uh, attention to flavor, and it's all sort of put together in a package that is, um, gives, it, it makes your day a little bit better. The evolution of specialty coffee and, and where it stands now, we're still in its infancy. Uh, and this is why it's an, a, kind of a, a fun time to be involved because we don't know what the future's gonna hold. We don't know the staying power of what we're doing. We don't even know if it's gonna be viable necessarily in the future and, and what the cap out on some of the, the prices and this and what people are willing to pay and experience. So we hear a lot about the direction that coffee's going. What I'm hoping to see more of are, is more emphasis on specialty beverages. Uh, having cocktails made with coffee is the fourth wave style of coffee creation. Um, that's really fun. It's really fun for the consumer. It's really fun for the cafe. It's really fun for the barista. It looks like um, more and more places looking like Portland. So the coffee scene that Portland has expanding to places like Dallas or Cleveland. So I think that's going to keep happening. Um, I think part of what happens with specialty coffee is you have People come in as baristas, they're just getting a job for whatever reason, they're musicians or students or whatever, and they need to pay the bills. And they get totally captivated by this thing and they realize, I wanna, I wanna do this, I wanna make a life out of this. Coffee culture now just sort of is specialty coffee culture. Um, it, everything has really changed in the last 10 years. Specialty coffee is about giving you a special experience, right? It's, it is fundamentally about not having the same experience you could get anywhere else. If I'm looking for something, like a way to spend my Sunday morning in a special way, I'm gonna go to a small cafe because I'm gonna get something really unique and really special. We have a huge emphasis on hospitality. We try really hard to connect with our audience. We try really hard to connect with the consumer, whether it be through social media or at the counter when they're ordering their pour over or their single origin espresso. You come in and it's, it's, it's like cheers in our shop. Everybody knows your name. You come in and you feel like you're in an extended part of your own home. This is, this is your, the last stop you know, on your way out the door, this is your living room, this is, you know, this is, or your foyer or whatever. You're like, oh, now we're going out on our way and you get this one last stop and it's all about, it's not just about getting a really good cup of coffee because you could do that at home, but it's more about 
the experience that you have, that, that nice little social engagement, uh, you know, something to put a smile on your face as you go out to face your day. 